Okay, I think we intuitively understand this. It's like, okay, cool. How do we put this into terms that we can actually use? So we'll mostly focus on collaborative filtering. So let's go into neighbor memory, or sorry, neighbor-based collaborative filtering. So um, also called like memory-based collaborative filtering. So with this one, um, we're gonna go into two parts. One is uh, neighbor-based, and then the other one's going to be more using embeddings in uh, other collaborative filtering. But the main thing for neighbor-based is that we use the idea of um, what, like we measure some way of saying, how are they similar to each other? And in the past, how have we measured things that are similar to each other? What was the, what was the kind of like the overall metric that we've used? Distance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's some measurement of distance. So like this is actually going to use uh, tend to use the like nearest neighbors, for example, and basically say thing either we're looking at saying are these items similar to each other or are these users similar to each other. The idea is that if the based on some, whatever features there are, um, maybe for example, in this case, they're showing food from the curriculum, um, but you can imagine like the movies. Like, are the movies clustered close together? or are the people based on these features are clustered close together. That's how you determine how similar they are, right? So the first one is like item-based collaborative filtering. So the idea here is that we look at saying, okay, like for example, let's say we have uh, this carrot, right? And we are looking for recognitions for this purple guy. And we say, okay, like, well, these, this carrot is very similar to this radish because um, let's say green person and yellow person both like um, carrots and radishes. So the idea there is it's very similar to each other based on their interaction between these two. Basically saying, oh, either they like it or they watch it or they eat it or whatever, right? And so the idea is like, well, okay, this person also likes carrot. Well, radishes are most similar to these people, or most similar to carrots based on these people's interactions. So we'll recommend it to this person, okay? So the main focus is that what is similar here versus user-based collaborative filtering. Let's say in this case, we're making recommendation for this yellow person here we then say, okay, looking at just the people by themselves, right? We say, okay, well, this person and this person are very similar to each other. And this person, this, let's say, uh, blue person over here, like, you know, eggplants, peppers, and radishes, then we can recommend also eggplants to yellow person, which maybe yellow person never thought of using eggplants, but it's because they're very similar to this user. Um, we can now recommend that over because we see that connection, okay? So one thing to kind of note, though, is that we base this closeness on like, you know, for the safer movies, like ratings and stuff. And it's actually really important about how we rate. So um, if those of you guys who like use Netflix and everything, um, whether or not you actually rate anything, do you know how they do the ratings on Netflix? Like what kind of input you give back to it? Can you remember? Or no, off that's their head. Yeah. So it turns out it actually, um, if you look at it next time you like watch something on Netflix, it's, uh, they'll have like a thumbs up or thumbs down where you can basically say, oh, thumbs up or thumbs down on the rating. And it's kind of interesting is that if you recall this not too long ago, they used to have star ratings. So it used to be like one through five. And it turns out there's a reason why you might not want to do one to five stars. And what might be one of those reasons? Because like some people might, I think like, one to five can be more interpreted based on the person than a thumbs up and a thumbs down. Yeah, I think what you're saying is like, I think what I would say is like, oh, someone's two might be someone else's three, or yeah, yeah. someone's four is really means like someone's five, you know, or something right. like that. But yeah. they felt the same. Yeah, exactly. And this is where thumbs up and thumbs down is a direct positive or negative. So there's actually this little article here that actually talks about like, how do you rate, you know, like what kind of ratings you can do and what for surveys and stuff like this. So like there are different types, like for example, like a yes or no, basically thumbs up, thumbs down, the rating scales and stuff like this. So it's a good article to talk about because the main thing for this is that if we don't have good data, um, we're not gonna have good results of understanding how things are similar to each other or how users are similar to each other. Okay. So good thing, kind of a good note to kind of remember is that it all depends on how we collect this information, okay? So um, some kind of review stuff on like how we can measure similarity. There's a bunch of ways we can do this. One is through like Pearson's correlation. Uh, we've seen this before going from minus one to one, right? Whether it's like inversely correlated or positively, like I guess negatively correlated or positively correlated. There's also Kendall's rank correlation, which does very similar to Pearson's R. Um, so like it uses a tau in this case. So it's also called like Kendall's tau coefficient or Kendall's tau um, correlation. 
and just basically know it's like a very similar where it goes from minus one to one. So there's a few ways you can kind of like measure out, and this isn't all of them, but this is a couple common ones that are used. Um, another one, like we talked about before, to measure similarity is through distance, right? So we talked about Manhattan distance, Euclidean distance. I mentioned before uh, cosine similarity, but we haven't talked too much about that. Um, note that the main thing about cosine similarity is similarity between this, uh, vectors, and really it's about the distances, the angular distance of those vectors. Um, and then Jacquard similarity, which is mentioned in the curriculum, which I think is the first time it's really mentioned, is basically um, it kind of measures uh, like kind of the crossover. So think more on um, like sets and stuff. Um, usually what I see Jacquard's most reference to, and I think it's the most like, explainable, is like if you have something like a box right here, like this is where the box exists, and you have a new box like this, Jacquard is saying how much does it lap, overlap. So this blue box is better, or this blue box covers some of it, but if I write like a new one, let's try to do something like uh, black here. If I draw a black box and this black box is like this, well, this black box is more similar to that pink one than the blue one is to the pink one. So I did this more crossover. But you can also think of this as like individual items of being like, oh, how much of the crossover of like whether or not it's a movie that they watched or something like that. So another way you can basically measure the similarity. Okay. So um, what's kind of cool, uh, I found this little article um, not too long ago, like I think it was literally just yesterday, um, is they actually show a little bit of all all four of those, um, hopefully it loads up, but all four of these uh, measurements of distance and stuff like this. No, oh, are we not loading today? Hmm. Well, okay. It, um, when it does load, uh, whatever, uh, check it out and everything like that, um, because it does kind of talk about, or it shows a little bit of like Manhattan distance, Euclidean distance, cosine similarity, and Jacquard similarity. Um, so I think it's a kind of a nice little article that kind of explains a bunch of it. I'm not really sure why it's not loading. I've been having issues before with, maybe just like a website. Oh, well, check it out on your own time. It'd be good. All right. Any questions though about measuring this distance, knowing similarity, anything like that? Okay. Makes sense? Cool. And you can think of again, like K nearest neighbors, right? That's kind of like a similar algorithm, like how we see how close something is. Okay. 